All right, so here we have a supine chest radiograph of an infant. The first thing that catches my eye is the presence of a nasogastric tube. The tip of this tube is seen projected in the distal esophagus, but ideally, we want this to be advanced into the stomach, so I would mention that to the clinicians. Now looking closely, I can see that the middle part of the tube deviates slightly to the right as it passes behind the heart. And that's interesting because it correlates with some other findings we'll get into in a moment. In terms of the overall structures, there's something very clear going on here with the carina, it's splayed. This tells me that the left atrium is likely enlarged because splaying of the carina is a classic sign in such cases. The next thing I'm focusing on is the overall heart size. And sure enough, there seems to be generalized cardiomegaly in addition to the left atrial enlargement. This enlargement of the left atrium is pushing everything a bit and is likely responsible for that splaying of the carina. The silhouette of the heart definitely suggests that both the atrial and ventricular chambers are enlarged. Moving to the lung fields, I'm seeing perihilar haziness bilaterally, and this is consistent with increased interstitial markings, particularly in the lower zones, most notably in the right lower zone. Now, this pattern of haziness and markings could be interpreted as signs of infection, such as pneumonia, but given the context and the findings of cardiomegaly, it's much more likely that we're dealing with pulmonary edema secondary to a cardiac cause. This fits well with the overall picture of congenital heart disease, possibly involving a mitral valve problem. At this point, I think it's reasonable to suggest that these, these findings most likely represent interstitial pulmonary edema, which would tie in with left heart failure due to a congenital mitral valve disease. In terms of further investigations, I would definitely recommend an echocardiogram to assess the function of the mitral valve and to confirm whether there's any significant regurgitation or stenosis. Now, if I were in a viva, an examiner might ask, what other features might you expect in congenital heart disease, specifically with a shunt? Well, if it's a right to left shunt, you'd expect decreased pulmonary vascular markings. In contrast, with a left to right shunt, you'd see increased pulmonary vascular markings as the extra blood flow congests the lungs. We're not seeing extreme vascular congestion here, so I'd be more inclined to think along the lines of valve disease rather than a significant shunt. Additionally, they might ask, how would you differentiate cardiogenic pulmonary edema from infective changes on a chest radiograph? The key is in the distribution of the markings. With pulmonary edema, especially cardiogenic, the haziness tends to be more central and bilateral, often around the perihelar region, as we're seeing here. Infective processes, on the other hand, tend to be more localized, usually with consolidations or air bronchograms, which we're not seeing much of in this case. So in conclusion, this chest radiograph presents a strong case for congenital mitral valve disease with resulting left atrial enlargement and interstitial pulmonary edema. Further evaluation with echocardiography will provide essential confirmation. And remember, if you want to keep honing your radiological skills with cases like this, make sure to subscribe to Radiology Made Easy. If you've had similar cases, feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. Let's keep the conversation going.